Jaime Munguia uh, versus John Ryder, uh, put John Ryder out, I believe, in four rounds, was it? Uh, what do you think about that fight? What do you think about Munguia at 68? Munguia has um, David Morrell and Benavides before he try to get to Canelo because you know if he gets to Canelo before David Benavides or Morrell, it's, it's all bad for boxing. You know what I'm saying? Kind of the rumor mill was that uh, Canelo did ask for permission to uh, seek a fight with uh, Munguia. Uh, they're both without. So you you one of the people that stand up right now ahead of time and say, nope, swipe left on that. Yeah, for real, bro. Like, he got to wait his turn. Shit, Benavidez been cooking in that oven with Canelo for two years. Then here comes David Morrell with his... Big punches and shits, dropping fools. Like, come on, bro. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't skip the lineup like that. The people want to see Benavidez first and foremost versus Canelo. They gonna take a Morel or Munguia because that's what they have to do. But the biggest fight sale for I would think Cinco de Mayo or September is you know David Benavidez Canelo. That Munguia conversation could, could, could like you said. To the left, to the left. <laughs> what about now? What about Canelo saying that uh, maybe he chooses Jamal Charlo? I, I would even say Jamal Charlo, definitely. It's, if it's not Benavidez, it's Charlo, even before David Morrell. I'd rather see Benavidez or Charlo versus Canelo, my top two. Okay, okay. Now, let me throw a little wild card in there for you, real quick. Uh, how about uh, that young, that, that, that soldier from Omaha? Uh, Bud Crawford, somehow, if that fight were to come to fruition, how do you that's feel about terrible. Crawford coming up it's to face Canelo? That now that's one right there. That now you could is a two division undisputed champion, he could do what the hell he want to do. He go fight Tyson Fury right now, you know what I'm saying? And it's gonna sell like hotcakes, you know what I'm saying? So for him to try to jump up and be great and go beat Canelo, I have to respect him for that. When you break that fight down, first off, let's break the size down because I know a lot of people looking at it and just saying, man, he's way too small to fight against Canelo Alvarez. But we both know these guys. We've seen both of these guys up close numerous amounts of times. Um, talk to the people about what you perceive as uh, what is the true size difference that you think uh, between Canelo and Terrence Crawford? The true size difference is the bite that's in the dog. It ain't about physical height and speed and, and size. It's, it's, it's the fight that's in him. Bud is a fighter. You know what I'm saying? I've seen a lot of small pit bulls be big pit bulls all day. And they both was killers. You know what I'm saying? It's not about that. You know what I mean? It's like I said, supreme confidence. He's on a horse right now. He's undisputed. And he, I just, I just, like I said, people got mad at me when I said he got to beat Earl Spence by stoppage, but that's exactly what he did. He wasn't going to beat him on points. He had to beat him by stoppage. You know what I'm saying? Me and him even talk about a couple of things at top rank. You know what I'm saying? And um, I, you know what I'm saying? I really think that he should try to go and be great and get that fight if that's on the table for him. And I think he could pull it off. And 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 let's get into that. Um, if Canelo and Terrence Crawford were to tangle uh, somewhere between 60 and 68, which I think that... Uh, Terrence has said, I go all the way up to 68 to go get the work. Um, on fight night, what stops that fight from looking a lot like Charlo Canelo did? With no disrespect to either guy, uh, but what do you think would be the difference between that bout and uh, the, the latter? The pride. I just feel like Crawford would go in there with a lot of pride, and if he has to go out and shield, that's what he's going to do. He's not going to succumb to just doing the rounds, you know, after taking a certain couple of shots. I think he's going to try to go and be great. You know, that's the difference. It's, it's the prize, the willpower, the intangibles. You know, the intangibles, man, in, in, in the sport is, is amazing. You know what I'm saying? Like, either you have it or you don't. And that could be your, I mean, you got the same skill level, bro. You could, same speed, same power, body shots, uppercuts, everything is on, on point. But if you got more, dog and more will than me you can will your way to the victory you know what i'm saying and is that where you see terrence crawford separating himself from canelo alvarez all these fighters from all these fighters is that he possesses more willpower than everybody else does yeah 
you know, let's get into uh, another bout here. Uh, somehow, AJ and Francis Ngannou are fighting in March in Saudi Arabia as well as Saudi Arabia continues to insert itself into big time boxing. Uh, what do you think about those two fighting? It kind of came out of nowhere, but here we go. I think um, Ngannou conditioning is suspect, but his power is definitely not suspect. So if you could get him to stand in the middle of the ring and breathe hard, you need to hit him in his body, chop him down and get him out of there. But you're taking a gamble because if he touches you, trying to sneak in there, and that, then you're in a canvas. You feel what I'm saying? But I think uh, at this point in Joshua's career, I feel like he's making himself a lot better. Now, some people on a decline, I feel Joshua's on an incline. You know what I'm saying? And as um, far as using his jab, keeping his length, keeping his distance, and just, you know, picking the right shots, being a little bit more aggressive. So I like Joshua in that fight. Joshua arguably coming off his best performance uh, for me. I had not seen AJ look so sharp uh, the way he did versus Otto Valine. Absolutely eviscerated Valine, man, uh, inside the distance. Valine not being able to come out of his corner. Yeah. So, I mean, like I said, he, he stay on that same pony and keep riding it all the way till the wheels fall off. He should have a very good ending to it towards the end of his career.